I learned to fly in the late 80s with a loose idea that one day I would become a commercial pilot. But due to eyesight issues, I couldn't pass a class one medical. No. And what with the costs, and then after that having a young family, I had to give it up. As my family grew and we started to get a bit more money, I took it up again in the early 2000s to just fly privately. But due to my short time learning and not flying for over 12 years, I pretty much had to start all over again from scratch. I learned to fly at Southend, a regional airport 30 miles to the east of London, just on the coast of the Thames where it meets the North Sea. In 2003, a friend and I bought our first aircraft together, a Grumman AA5 Traveller. A man did it, we have some fun in it. We flew it everywhere and got ourselves in some really hairy situations. But I love the aircraft and it taught me so much about flying. I did my night and instrument training in it and with no autopilot, everything was hand flown. After just over three years with the AA5, we wanted to move on. So sold the Grumman and we got ourselves a Piper Arrow. But not just any Arrow. This was the X demonstrator from Piper which then had a dealer at Shoreham. It had just over 52 hours on it from new and was one of the first to be factory fitted with the Avidyne Integra integrated glass cockpit and the STEC 55X autopilot, the same avionics suite that was fitted in the then new Cirrus. It was a very capable aircraft and we flew it pretty much everywhere, nearly always IFR. However, after less than 100 hours, we had engine failure in it at Calais whilst doing my instrument revalidation. We lost the number two cylinder immediately after takeoff, but luckily we were with a skilled instructor who immediately took over and by a miracle he managed to get it back to the airfield. It was stuck in France for a few months whilst we had legal wranglings with Piper over the warranty, but they came good in the end and they fixed it. I never really trusted the aircraft after that and when the financial crisis hit in 2008, we sold the Arrow on. After being without an aircraft for a while, in 2009 we bought a low hour Rockwell Commander TCA 112, the 200 horsepower turbocharged variant. I'd always loved the look of the Commander and even though when we got the aircraft it had this awful orange paint job and 1978 vintage instruments, you could see that it was still a stunning machine. We flew the Commander for a few years in its purchase condition, then in 2013 we did a major update to it. She had a fantastic new paint job, based on a design I took from the Rockwell Commander model in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I'd always liked. We then had a total avionics and panel refit, installing the Aspen Evolution primary and MFD displays. Fully coupled to the STEC 55 autopilot. We upgraded the Navcom to a Garmin GTN 650 to complement the GNS 430 already installed and we also added an Avidyne TAS 600 traffic advisory system all into a brand new panel. I felt really proud flying her and she had stunning ramp appeal. We were still at Southend which had been purchased from the local council by a new company with big ideas to rejuvenate the airport into a low cost hub. They invested in major new infrastructure program which added an extended runway, new lighting and an ILS on each end. We loved the new facilities and with the commander's capabilities we got to utilise all of the benefits to operate all year round and in pretty much all weathers. Inevitably, as Southend's commercial traffic grew, GA at the airport understandably had to go to the back of the queue and along with long waits for fuel, extended holds and taxi times, and tighter and tighter security, making it almost impossible to bring passengers without a security clearance onto the site. It was only a matter of time before we realised uh, we need to find a new home. So in late 2016, I departed Southend in the Commander as a resident for the very last time, for the short 10 minute flight west to our new home at North Weald. Now North Weald is the polar opposite to Southend and apart from the same 1800 metre or almost 6000 foot runway, operations there could hardly be more different. For starters, apart from some warbirds, a couple of flying schools and an occasional helicopter rides, North Weald has no commercial flying aviation activities. They don't have any instrument approach procedures, there's no radar, nor ATC, although they do have an excellent basic air to ground service. 
There's no night flying, in fact there's no lights. And there's a curfew meaning no departures before 8.30 in the morning and no landings after 1900 or sunset plus 30, whichever is earlier. As opposed to the 24-7 all year round operations at South End. At first I found the change quite liberating. Having easy access to the aircraft and no ATC meant flying was becoming fun again. However, it wasn't long before I got caught out in bad weather, trying to get back into North Weald, and without the safety of any kind of instrument procedure, made things extremely risky. So we vowed to only fly when North Weald was in VFR conditions in future. In late 2017, my flying partner decided to move abroad, and I ended up with a commander pretty much to myself. But it was getting really expensive, and also difficult to get parts, especially as the aircraft was now over 40 years old. Alongside this, with only daytime VFR flying from Northfield, the capabilities of the commander were wasted, and so with a heavy heart, in mid-2018, we sold her on. On my way back to collect my car from the airfield after delivering the commander to a new owner, I noticed this new little plane sitting on the apron. The hangar manager told me it belonged to a couple of guys that had just bought it from Switzerland, and they were looking for another share. Out of curiosity, I took the details and arranged a test flight. What a difference. The power to weight ratio was immense, the controls were really light, and the manoeuvrability was out of this world. The stall speeds were low, the running costs were lower, and it felt one of the safest light aircraft I had ever been in. I brought the share, thinking I'll keep it for a year, then move back to a bigger aircraft. However, it didn't take me long to fall in love with the Sport Cruiser and all the new places I could now visit. I'd never really done any farm strip flying before, but now I was visiting everywhere and it was amazing. The Sport Cruiser is only certified for daytime VFR flight in the UK and as I was never one for flying a single engine aircraft at night, North Wheels restrictions didn't really affect me. One thing I never did like about Northfield was those operating hours. The UK sits at a fairly high latitude and from late April through to early September it doesn't get dark until after Northfield closed at 7pm. And in the middle of summer, nighttime doesn't happen until after 9pm which means we miss out on a lot of summer evening flying when the weather is best. And you can go and have a bimble after work. In 2021, we moved our maintenance from North Weald to an airfield some 15 miles away at Andrewsfield. Not that there was an issue with our engineers at Weald, but my co-owner worked there and we just fancied a change. I've always liked Andrewsfield. It's in a rural setting, about the same distance from my home as North Weald, and has an 800 metre or 2,600 foot long runway with lighting. It has the same air to ground radio service as North Weald, but not only is the runway a thousand metres shorter, but it is grass, as opposed to the massive concrete one at Weald. When a vacancy came up at one of the new hangars at Andrewsfield in the spring of 2023, we decided that we would make a move. So here we are. We have now moved our aircraft to Andrewsfield and given up that beautiful massive runway. The excellent staff and great atmosphere of North Weald, but we have true dawn to dusk flying, a lovely little clubhouse, a perfect hangar and maintenance on site. I couldn't be happier, however, we're now in midsummer, and although Andrewsfield has a mesh in the grass for winter flying, I know from experience things can get very wet and muddy very quickly once the weather turns. Just hope I don't regret our move. Thank you so much for watching, and short field out.